The Ares launch vehicle is going to be a tremendous machine, and it's going to harness a tremendous amount of energy. Sitting on the launch pad, the Ares vehicle will be over two million pounds, and most of that is in propellant to get the launch vehicle from the ground out of the Earth's gravity well into orbit. The more something weighs, the more thrust it takes to get it off the ground. If you try to throw a golf ball up, it doesn't take much effort. If you then try to throw a soccer ball up, it takes a little more effort. Then try to throw a bowling ball up, it takes a lot more effort. This is all thrust. How much thrust does it take to lift this, throw it up in the air? Now think about how much it would take to throw a building up in the air, a skyscraper. That's what we're talking about. Launch vehicles are always on a knife edge. You have to design everything to be just strong enough to do its mission, but not any stronger. Because if it's stronger, it's heavier, and that's mass we don't get to send to the moon with the astronauts. On a car, you can add a pound or two here or there, and it's not really going to influence your gas mileage to any great extent. You add a pound or two onto the side of a launch vehicle, and it has huge implications on how much cargo you can put into outer space. You have to overcome the effects of gravity. You have to make sure you can get up enough speed and inertia. It's always a challenge between mass to orbit and thrust to get it there. So as soon as the vehicle doesn't need a part, it gets rid of it. One of the advantages of building in stages is that once a stage or a portion of the vehicle has served its purpose, it can be shed and is no longer needed. Here's a model of the Ares rocket. The lower portion is the first stage. The Ares-1 first stage motor It's the main thrust to get the Ares-1 rocket into space. If you actually break down the, the first stage motor, it's a metal case. And on the inside of the case, you put insulation and then you put propellant. So the propellant is all the internal part of that overall rocket it's got a hole down the whole center of the rocket. It's got a bore. So when we ignite our whole Ares-1 first stage rocket, you have an igniter, and in less than six tenths of a second, it shoots that flame, you know, 160 something feet down that whole rocket, and ignite all the surface of all that propellant so that it all starts burning at once. The Ares launch vehicle will go from zero miles an hour to a thousand miles per hour in just less than one minute. The first stage burns for about two minutes. When the rocket gets up to about 36 miles, it actually drops away that first stage. All the propellant in the first stage is burned up. It's, it has nothing more to offer. So the first stage will separate from the upper stage and fall back to Earth. And that way, the vehicle doesn't have to bring all that extra weight into orbit. We can do the calculations and know where those rockets are going to land in the ocean. And we tug it back to land and we can reuse that hardware. The next wider portion is the upper stage. The upper stage is a liquid-fueled rocket that uses liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen as its fuel. And it's being powered by a J2X engine. And the J2X engine on the upper stage will ignite and propels the astronauts even further into orbit. Once all the propellant in the upper stage is burned out, it will separate from the Orion crew capsule, which is where the astronauts sit. The Orion will then be in orbit and can go on to the space station or to the moon.